Hey, g'day, you mob. Welcome back to my kitchen. Um, this video, I want to I want to show you how I marinate the goose. Um, in my last video, I had a um, I bagged them, okay, for family, friends, whoever, or just for freezing in your own freezers. Now, um, so I had one left over that I said I'm going to keep for myself. What I am going to do is going to show you how how I marinate goose okay so what I've done here um, I have gathered what I'm gonna put in here now forgive the brand names right? you can use any brand you like um, and what it, whatever flavors you like okay so there's that there's that goose there that I said I was gonna keep in the family yes I'm gonna keep it for the family however I'm gonna marinate it now the, the marinade is is pretty much the same as cooking in the slow cooker that you can see over my shoulder here um, when we do it in a slow cooker with all those yummy flavors that i showed you in the previous video it does the same thing okay it marinates itself slow cooks the juices get into it the flavors get into it and you know you can't go wrong that way everyone has a different way of um, cooking it i know um, you can do it straight on a fry pan after a marinade, or you can just cook it straight up and have natural um, fried goose. Or chuck it in the oven. Your choice. It's up to you because you're going to eat it. All right. So, like I said, I've gathered bits and pieces here. I've got the main ingredient, the bird. Okay. Um, I've got my tools on hand this time, so I'm not reaching around looking for, looking for them. All right. So and I've prepared them, everything's sharp and ready to rock and roll. Now, I'm going to place the video down at the moment. I'll, I'll just try to do something different because um, the last few videos, the, the camera was fixed. I just felt like a little bit of movement was um, warranted. So, we've got our marinating dish here. Um, it's, a sm it's a smaller version. Um, there are different sizes and you can buy them from any good um, you know, supermarket or even Tupperware, your choice. Uh, now, I forgot what I was going to say. You can do it in any kind of um, container. It doesn't have to be a proper marinating dish like this is, but the, the dimpled or rippled surface on the bottom of here, on the base, allows flavours to get under the meat and which can be soaked up. So flipping, you know, every couple of hours, yeah, it's up to you. Um, you can hear my fingers run across it there. That's it, it just allows for the flavors, juices to get under the meat. All right, so I'm gonna fix this camera up now to have it set up so you can see my bench, my workspace, and we'll get along with it. What I'm gonna use, I should, I did show you the ingredients here. Um, it's pretty much, what I put in the slow cooking process. Um, but you can add whatever flavor you like, whatever tickles your fancy, whatever your taste buds agree with, okay? Um, I probably will use chili in this one because the family didn't mind the last one and it's gone off. You saw mum in an earlier video. She came and took what um, I gave her lunch. She had the leftover slow cooked meal. Um, she loves it and she received their giblets as requested. Now, hang on a second, I'm gonna pause, fix this um, camera in the spot, and we'll get cracking, eh? Hey, I'm back. Yeah, I just propped up the um, camera on the window seat. Oh, somebody's home, and it is Sunny Jim. Just in time, eh? To watch Dad marinate a goose. All right, very quickly, the bird. Let's get it out, put it on the chopping board. Alright, I'm going to pause it for a second. Um, just because I forgot something, I'm going to grab it. Alright, so, what, when, I, when I originally bagged the meat, um, depending on where I am, you know, you've got to give this a good wash, okay? So, what I'll do with all my cuts, I'll give them a good wash. Alright, so I'm going to do that and 
and then we'll do those cuts which we did for the slow cooking process. Um, we all know how to do that by now, but I will show you again just in case you forgot. And so I give the bird a good wash, all right? And they're ready to rock and roll. I mean, you, you can trim it down or clean it, I should say, that um, suits your standards. There's no wrong process, okay? This is all about you and your taste buds. And like I said in an earlier video, I've been doing this for a little while and I've sort of gathered and collected um, proof that my family has or does like the way I um, do the goose. I'm not someone else's name. And locked out. Not gonna stop. He's got a set of keys, that's the older son. Anyway, here with me for a sec. Gonna change camera angles. Yeah. Hey, so I've just acquired the help of my son. He's gonna record for me. So we're not one dimensional. The camera's not stuck in one place. So where we're up to, we washed the goose and now I'm just gonna trim up the little bits and pieces of it that is not really edible. Come in here, son, check this out. So, on, on the wing and thigh, uh, sorry, the drumstick and thigh. There's tendons here, we just give that a quick cut. Bam. All right, that one's ready to rock and roll. All right, and then we're gonna separate the wing from the breast. Okay, find that, the end of the bone there, and just give it a nice, easy cut, just through there. The knife will tell you if there's anything in the way, you just adjust, all right, so there you go. Wing, breast, ready, and then same, same, same. All right, there's a little bit, no, I want that. There's a little bit of tendon there. We'll cut that off. Nice and sharp. All right. Find that space. And it's up to you. You can leave more breast meat on that, on the wing. And that's just a, a treat for um, whoever picks that out of, the, out of the pot at the end of the day. So this is one bird. I say leave the fat on. Others will tell you to... Um, Tell you to discard it but it'll add to the flavoring just like nana used to say all right then here's a drumstick here tendons attached you can't eat that so let's trim it off a little bit slippery due to being wet after the rinse you just take it straight off no fuss let's get it out of the way <laughs> there you go get out get out get out there that's that that's done Ditch it, no worries. So we're going to go and separate the the drumstick and a thigh. Now find, it, find that knuckle, like we've done in previous videos. Simple. You should be experts at this now if you watched and listen. Okay, cut that knuckle, the bone. Clear your fingers away. Don't mind my nail polish. And bam, there you go. That's done. Let's find the other one. Let's find the other one. Whoa. There is no other one because it's been... I must have gave someone an extra piece of it in one of those packing. Anyhow, that's done. All right, so there, we're gonna separate that cut we did with the um, clippers. Right there, your knife will tell you how it is. And then onto the, um, onto the breast. Now, there is a valve that comes into the breast. All right, we're just going to trim that off. Don't go too deep because you don't want to take too much meat away. And there you go, that's gone. Check the other one. There's a little bit of fat there, but hey, flavors, flavors, flavors. That's what it's all about. Your taste buds. All right, do the same on the other breast, left and right. Don't take too much meat if you can help it, but it's gone. Awesome. So they're ready to rock and roll. These cuts are ready to go. We don't have to do any more with that. Now just dicing. Dicing the um, the breast, all right. Get it straight, straight enough. And this one's a fairly decent sized breast, so I'm going to do one. Probably do three cuts on this one. Two, three. Okay, let's get it through here. Get your fingers right out the way because you don't want an extra flavour of me and blood. Okay, push it aside for now, and let's get on to the other one. Okay, another decent sized breast. Right across there. I'm going to do three cuts again on this one um, because it's, it's thick, it's wide, it's up a honker, 
Um, if you're a goose shooter, you know what a honker is. And the last one, straight across there. All right. There you go. Let me just chop it up, dice it up now into white sizes. Um, th these are a flavour explosion in your in your meal. So you can cut them small, you can cut them large, depending on how many people you want to feed, or or whatever you like. All right. So pick up, get through this. I'll speed up a little bit. Um, you will see bits of blood there. That's just clotting from where the um, where the pellet stopped the bird in mid-flight. Like, that's not going to hurt you. Um, you can rinse it off properly, or just scrape it off like I just did. Uh, no harm will come to you should you eat it. Okay. Now, before doing this, I did wash my hands thoroughly, and it's always good, you know, because your mum always tells you wash your bloody hands, huh? Before eating. Or preparing meals. All right, a couple more to do. Bam, bam. This one's nice and thick, so I might halve that again, just so we have more, more bite-sized um, rest pieces in our marinade. Cut that in half. Cut that in half. These are all decent sizes. Um, whoever's, whoever's going to eat this will love it. There you go. Bam. That's the breast. That's what it looks like. There. Get rid of the junk. There you go. So, I don't know how much would that weigh. Let's go. I reckon all pieces would weigh um, just under a kilo, I reckon, or close to a kilo. Now, that's a lot of meat um, when you talk about it in weight. All right. So, like I said, we've got our marinating dish. I'm going to put it the blue as my base. All right. Now, I always add a little bit of water to it uh, for two reasons. It spreads spreads the um, the flavours, but also if you're going to cook this on a if you're going to cook this on a barbecue um, on a grill on a plate, the water will help you or will assist you with cleaning after the fact. Um, you don't have to do too much digging with your scraper on a hot plate or the um, or the grill. The water will assist. It's just it'll come off easier. Trust me. Live and learn. Hey, okay, come back in here, son. All right. So I'm just going to place all that meat in there. I'll put the breast down on the bottom um, because they'll sit on those raised um, on the raised surface down the bottom of that um, dish, and it'll that's it'll soak it all up. All right. So let's get it all in there. Okay. There's, there's no right or wrong way to do this. It's just, let's get it in there, right? Quick rinse of the hands. Um, and we're done with our chopping board tonight. We can move that out of the way. A little bit of a rinse so it's easy to clean once this is all done. All right, so there, there, that's what we're looking now. That's how we're looking. How good's that? All right, so like I said in the earlier video, you just put in the sauces, the flavors you like. All right? Now don't be shy with these because the explosion, the flavour explosion, um, it's what makes a good marinade, you know, and, and a tasty one too at the same time. People will come back for more, should you um, get it right. Now, like I said, all these flavours um, and brands, it's, you use what you want, what you normally buy. You don't have to buy anything special um, or you don't have to buy a special brand to do this. Right now, I use this the, the tomato and barbecue sauce one because they're good flavour, and two they add a little bit of sweetness at the end of the day. All right, so you can say that we're just a sheer, worst a sheer sauce. Not too much of this because it is overpowering, and then we're going to add our saltiness to the mix, which is the soy sauce. All right, and just a little bit, a little bit of that. That's that. That's the saltiness. All right. Doesn't have to be heaps. Just make sure every piece gets a touch. Now, same again. A um, little bit of water over the top. There you go. Bam. And if you have a look at that, you can use your fingers. I'll use my fingers because I don't have to touch the camera now because I've got Sunny Jim doing it. All right. Let's just get get that in. Get it down low. All right. And bam. 
turn them over, flip them over. Look at that. You can hear the juices, the flavours. Yeah, it looks watery, but that's the way I want it because, um, like I said, your um, cooking equipment will be easier, easier to clean once you've cooked them, whether it be on a barbecue, slow cooker or fry pan. Check that out. All right, uh, quick rinse of the hands, focus on that for a minute. Lick your lips, whatever. All right, so don't forget any flavors you like, <clears throat> you put in. All right, so everyone has their own, family's got their own little secret marinating um, ideas, uh, but this is mine. And I keep the flavors pretty consistent between here and the slow cooking process. One, um, you know, after a little while, I, I might even just chuck that straight in the slow cooker and because the mix is already done. All right, don't have to add anything else. You might just have to add a little bit of stock to top it up. Um, like I said, two cups per bird. This is one bird, so I'll just do one cup with that French onion or whatever flavor stock you like. All right. Put the lid on. Give it a good mix up Flip a couple of times. <laughs> just make sure the lid doesn't come flying off. Because you don't make a mess in wifey's kitchen and then yeah, we'll be doing this outside in the bloody 36 degree heat. 90% humidity. All right, there you go. Come back, have a look then. Let's open this up. After a bit of a toss and turn, bam, look at that. Now, what, I'll, what I'm gonna do with this is stick it in the fridge. Um, it's up to you. So it's four o'clock now, and if I was gonna eat this um, on, the, on the barbecue, I would, I would marinate it for about three hours. However, I tend to go out again tonight to um, go get a couple more birds. I've had a few requests from um, family and friends who have, um, who have wanted a goose dropped off on their doorstep. Right. Clean this up a bit so you don't make mess in the, in the um, family fridge. If you've got a separate fridge for your, um, for your beers and your meat that you've hunted yourself, then don't be too fast because you know, adds character to your fridge. Anyhow, hope you enjoyed that simple method. The flavours are easy, easy to pick up anywhere. You should have all those in your cupboard already, in your pantry. Um, and that's it. Chuck it in the fridge. Bob's your uncle. And thanks for visiting me again in my kitchen. Out. Yeah.